Well, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Duggar family values. Oh, they're such good values. As, uh, that were on display uh, recently during a, a Megyn how many, Kelly. How many kids is it now? Is it it's, still 19? It's 19. Okay. Yeah. And it, still counting? Uh, <laughs> Has she hit menopause? No, um, I, I don't think she's officially hit menopause, but she's really close. And, and I think Beth Presswood had noted that her odds of conceiving again mm. are pretty low. Yeah. So, um, and, and she had a lot of problems with the last pregnancy. So it's really unlikely that she'll ever be able to have another child. Right. Um, for, for people completely out of the loop on reality TV, why does anyone care about who, who are the Duggars? So the Duggars <laughs> are this um, very conservative Christian family. They've got a TV show, or they did have a TV Had. show, yes, on the Learning Channel um, called 19 Kids and Counting. Um, and they are part of a, a conservative Christian movement known as Quiverful. Mm -hmm. um, there are a couple of bloggers out there. If you're not familiar with the Quiverful movement, you should check out. One of them is Vicki Garrison, mm -hmm. who has a No Longer Quivering. Is that right. her blog? Vicki okay. Garrison, the Atheist of the Year, according to yes. the 2015 American yes. Atheist Convention. And there's also Libby Ann over on Lovejoy Feminism, who has written a fabulous series on the Duggars. And both Vicki and Libby Ann came out of this Quiverful movement, so they've got some great insight into what happens, what, what kind of family dynamic is going on, especially when confronted with these sorts of, let's say, um, a crisis of sexual sin, as they would put it, right? <laughs> now, yes. keep in mind that if you're in this sort of uh, conservative Christian environment, a crisis of sexual sin can be anything from you know, actual rape of somebody all the way down to the, he's a teenager and he compulsively masturbates. So. Right, kind of a lot of space between those things. Yeah, there's this huge range of things you can sin about. So if it has to do with sex and you're not married to the person that you're having the sex with, it's probably a sin in their book. Right, and the thing is, this kind of fits into the whole Christian ethos where uh, basically there is this infinitely powerful guy who sets the standards, and right. therefore any amount of falling short uh, that, that you could do um, is equally sinful and condemns right. you to an eternity of hell, and the only way out of that is forgiveness. It's like a legal system where jaywalking is given the exact same penalty as first degree premeditated murder. Exactly. And in fact, you did a blog post on this whole forgiveness. Yeah, ethos that's true. Now available at freethoughtblogs.com slash AXP. Right. <laughs> yeah, you should take it. So I wanted to talk about uh, the interview that the Duggars did with Megyn Kelly on Fox. Mm -hmm. um, Fox News, the only yeah. network that will take the, those people seriously. So, Well, other than the network that gave them a freaking show. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, as you may have already suspected, it was a bit of a softball interview. Mm -hmm. There were no real hard questions asked, and the answers were pretty uh, consistent with what we've seen the Duggars do in the past, which is summed up very nicely on Libby Ann's blog, where she talks about it's uh, minimizing what happened and just encouraging denial about the whole thing. Um, so, in this interview, Jim, Bob, and Michelle make a point of saying that the girls that um, that their son Josh molested, their daughters, okay, he molested four of his sisters. They consistently throughout this call it inappropriate touching because, you know, that's a way of minimizing what was going on here. Uh, they point out that the girls were asleep and they didn't even know that the touch was inappropriate. Well, that's kind of the responsibility of the older person yeah. to deal with. So I let's, mean, yeah, they don't know that they are being violated. Yeah. That's that's part of what being a kid is about, is that you don't know as much and people unscrupulous people can take advantage of that. Right. But it, it also points to some other problems in that family dynamic, which is this idea that if you're asleep and somebody molests you, is it really molestation? If you didn't know it was happening? Hmm. It's like, yes, if you're asleep and somebody molests you, you still got molested, okay? <laughs> they didn't know the touch was inappropriate. 
That's because they got no sex education, none. If, if somebody has a five-year-old child, your five-year-old child is old enough to know whether people are allowed to touch them in a certain way or not, and which people are allowed to touch them and where they're allowed to touch, okay? These kids have, I don't know that they understand they have the ability to say no to someone in a position of authority. They are primed for abuse because they don't know that something's inappropriate and they don't know they're allowed to say no. Uh, the other part of this that I found really kind of disturbing is that his sisters, his victims, two of his victims, as well as, as Jim, Bob, and Michelle, continue to refer to what he did as he made some bad choices. Okay, Bad choices are when you wear a brown belt with black shoes. Okay, <laughs> These were not bad choices. These were criminal acts. The other thing that happened was that when Josh came to them and told them what happened, because he was very disturbed. They make a point of saying he was very upset about this, and I believe that. He probably understood at 14 that what he was doing was really wrong. He came to his parents. He was apparently very upset and asked for help. Um, they didn't get him any help. They never helped him. Hmm. They eventually sent him off to be with this, this guy they describe as a mentor who supposedly straightened him out. Um, some people have done a little investigating and figured out that this mentor was associated with um, a youth counseling um, facility that was associated with this advanced training institute, um, a, Christian, a conservative Christian organization run by Bill Gothard. Bill Gothard actually had to step down from his position with ATI recently because 34 women have accused him of harassment and molestation. Mm. So he's probably not a great guy to be mentoring anybody. I don't know that he was actually the mentor. It was somebody else associated with that. So there's just, you know, if there was a bad choice, maybe that was it, <laughs> sending your son to be mentored by this group. Um, the other thing they commented on in this interview was that, um, and, and I'm going to read a quote here for you. As we've talked to other parents and different ones since then, a lot of families have said they've had similar things happen in their families. So in other words, <laughs> this happens in all kinds of families. It's not just us. Yeah, that, that is not something to say like, oh, well, that makes it okay. We're just so experiencing the same yeah. problems. Like maybe there's a systematic problem with child abuse going on yeah. in your community. And part of what encourages it, I'm not saying it's caused by Christianity, but this culture of only being accountable to other family members and other, uh, other people right. in the same religious group is certainly not helping. Yeah, and, and you know, it, it's true, these things do happen, but it's not, this is not normal. This doesn't happen, I promise you, this, this kind of thing never happened in my family. Nope. Um, if, if something like, if anyone in my family had come forward with something like this, um, the perpetrator and the victims would not be living under the same roof. You know, the adults in the family would have immediately made sure of that and both would have gotten appropriate counseling. It wouldn't have been a, a question of, oh, we'll, we'll pray about it, um, he'll ask for forgiveness, and we'll pretend this didn't happen. We'll just watch him a little more closely. Which, by the way, watching him a little more closely obviously didn't work because he did it again. Mm -hmm. um, and he was actually escalating. Yeah, there, there seems to be a rush to protect the perpetrator yes. from consequences. Like more than anything else, the primary concern has always, as far as I've heard this topic discussed, been about what happens to Josh now. Oh, poor Josh, everybody's ganging up on him on the internet. And, and the, the first and foremost concern should be are those girls still safe right now? Right. That should be the only thing that people are worried about before they start worrying about the welfare of Josh and his public image. Yes. And just so you know, one of the police reports, I guess it was the sheriff's report that was less redacted, so it does have a description of one of the episodes because they said, oh, the girls weren't aware. That's actually not true because one of the episodes happened 
when his sister was sitting in his lap and he was reading to her and um, apparently he um, touched her inappropriately under her clothes um, which according to um, what I've read that the uh, um, the report says that he um, pulled her pants down under the dress she was wearing and touched her and then it felt weird that's that was what she said so she was aware of it um, she was aware on some level that it was inappropriate um, and this represented an escalation of what he had previously done so this is really wrong and there there's really no evidence that 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 Josh has ever gotten appropriate counseling since this episode it if he has, we don't know about it, and maybe we wouldn't know about it, but given their history and the things they're still saying about it, I don't have any confidence that he got appropriate counseling for this. Yeah, and does this guy now himself have kids? He Is does. Is that what I understand? He does indeed. Yeah. They are on that whole quiverful path themselves. I think uh, his course. wife is pregnant with their fourth or something fourth. like that. Fourth, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, somebody not in that cult ought to keep an eye on those kids. Yes. I think. Yes. And so, you know, for the longest time, people have said, hey, do you, you know, do you think the Duggars are mistreating their kids um, because they've got so many of them and it's just the two parents? And for the longest time, I thought, you know, there's no evidence that simply being a member of a large family like that is in any way abusive or neglectful. It seemed like the kids were happy and well cared for. My concern all along was that um, because there were so many, they wouldn't get a lot of parental attention and that the older siblings would end up with some kind of child care responsibility of their own. And I really think that kids ought to be allowed to be kids and they shouldn't have, you know, sort of pseudo parenting responsibilities uh, when they're young children as well. Um, those are my only two uh, real concerns about the Duggars religious indoctrination side. Now I would say, yeah, somebody needs to keep tabs on this family. There's some really bad stuff going on in there. And they, it's clear they can't, um, they can't handle something like this on their own. Um, and I think, uh, you know, one more point, uh, this deal with, uh, with Josh and him, he obviously realized that, that what he was doing was not appropriate. And um, I forget where I read it, whether it was uh, Libby Ann's blog or somewhere else, but they made a point of saying, you know, it's kind of like um, a 14 year old boy in this environment who's taught that masturbation is a sin but he's 14, and so he masturbates, and then he feels horribly guilty about it, mm -hmm. you know, and he confesses, and he vows never to do it again, and then he does it again <laughs> because, you know, he can't stop himself. And, you know, in the case of masturbation, there's no reason to, you know, make that a bad thing or, or you know, make him feel guilty about that. But in this case, he had some kind of compulsion going on with molesting his sisters. He went to his parents for help, and they didn't help him. Right. And, you know, that also goes back to the point I was making earlier about all sin being treated equal. Yeah. Because, um, you know, they, the system of ethics, which should be about uh, helping people get along with one another and, and keep kids safe, yeah. um, is kind of twisted into this all or nothing kind of morality where things that people do that are normal human behavior are treated yeah. as, uh, I mean, you know, they're treated as just as bad as something that does actual harm to people. Yes. Uh, a, which masturbation does not. Yes. A normal developmentally appropriate activity is treated as the same thing as molesting your sisters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a problem. And, and so what kind of message did Josh get? Oh, this sexual sin is something that... Uh, you know, we all struggle with. And so this business of touching my sisters must be the same. Like, it's bad, but I can always just go back to the Jesus well and get forgiven. Yep. Well, and, and as a further comment on that, I get the same comment sometimes from um, gay Christians who comment mm -hmm. that um, this is... Um, everybody's got their own sin and this is theirs, mm -hmm. you know, that they struggle with this <coughs> or this is just, you know, their, their sin that they have to deal with and it's no different than anybody else's sin. It's like, no, your natural right. sexuality yeah, no, is not a sin. This one is different. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so that I just wanted to highlight the hypocrisy of the Duggar family values here. 
um, and and really point out just how bad this really is mm -hmm. uh, when all sin is is the same no matter what.